All right, great. Great, so hello guys, my name is Anurad Shah. I am a grade 11 student. I go to a school called Iroquois Ridge High School in Oakville, Ontario. Uh, I'm really interested about the intersection of business and technology and hoping that you guys have a fantastic time at my blockchain workshop today. As I mentioned previously, try to make this very conversational so that you guys can uh, talk amongst each other and ideate and, uh, and you know, brainstorm some good, great ideas. Uh, so over the past year, I've been in a program called the Knowledge Society, uh, which is basically a place for um, people under the age of 18 to work with each other and build creative solutions to really tough problems that, they're, that are in the world. Uh, so I've been in the program for the past year, um, and I will be in the second year program, which is Activate, um, next year. And if you're looking to learn more about that, you can go to tks.world. Uh, it's a really great program. I recommend it to anybody out there. Um, but uh, through the program, I've I've uh, worked and researched various exponential technologies, many of which that we're running workshops here today. So like BCIs, AI, ML, uh, space tech, so on and so forth. And one of those technologies was blockchain. And uh, that technology really caught my eye because uh, it uh, had to do with the intersection of business and technology, which is uh, something that's really interesting to me. Um, so over the past year, I've worked on a couple projects that um, are really cool to me. Some of them had to do with blockchain, some of them haven't. But I, I just want to—I always want to educate you on these projects that I've taken on, uh, just so you get a better idea of my background and who I am as a person. Uh, so my first really important and big project that I worked on was with three other of my friends, and we worked with Instacart, which was which is a forty billion dollar company that is basically Amazon for. Um, for groceries. Uh, so we were able to collaborate with them and try to find a solution to improve their customer experience. Uh, and that was really fun. We got to pitch our ideas to uh, Instacart execs and VPs, and it was overall a really, really great time. Um, next, I worked on a, a company called Aperio, which is Latin for infinity. Um, and this, ha this idea had to do with blockchain. Uh, we can talk about this later if you guys are interested. Uh, but basically, the whole premise of the idea had to do with making communities and households more resilient to tragedy and change. So think about if we were to hit the COVID-19 pandemic, once again, five years down the line, how could we uh, create tools and services such that we're able to uh, cope with the conditions better uh, than we did the first time around? Um, and I'm also really interested in like social good, social change, making impact, like tangible impact with people around the globe, specifically in developing parts of the world. Um, so recently I was able to work with three other of my friends with the United Nations uh, to improve digital literacy uh, for women and girls um, in developing parts of the world. Um, so more specifically, we were able to uh, create a curriculum for teachers in rural parts of Rwanda, such that digital literacy would, could grow uh, in, in school environments. Um, and currently our solution is being reviewed um, by the um, by the, the United Nations uh, and hopefully it'll be implemented sometime soon. Um, I was also able to work on uh, a couple of moonshot projects, which are projects uh, that have to do with 10xing the current status quo uh, in a period of five to 10 years from now. Um, so that was really fun. And I was able to work with, again, three other of my friends uh, to diagnose any illness, sickness, or cancer out there all through your sweat. Um, so again, this was a moonshot, so this is not possible right now, but uh, with future innovations and in technology and artificial intelligence, this will be a reality. Mm. Uh, so that was also, this is probably one of my favorite projects this past year. Um, and then alongside that, I've, I've worked on a couple other blockchain projects that have to do with decentralized finance, uh, voting dApps, um, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, voting dApps, DeFi, a bunch of things. So lots of research into the blockchain space uh, and lots, lots of hackathons and ideating in that space as well. Um, so that's that's some background as to where my projects and my skills lie. Um, I, and uh, this summer, I'm actually going to be interning at a management consulting firm uh, that focuses in the fintech blockchain and, and enterprise SaaS space. Um, so I'll be combining my interests of technology and business uh, to help solve some of the tougher problems uh, some of the big companies out there face. Um, and then talking about social change, I will also be working at a nonprofit called Shape, 
um, to improve how donations work using a robo advisor. Um, so yeah, that those that's a little bit of my background. I hope that that tells you a little bit more about who I am as a person. Uh, but now I want to get into the the uh, the workshop part of this. Um, so are you guys still with me? I don't know. I can't see it. Maybe I should split screen this. Can I split screen this? I can't split screen it. You can. can. So if you keep on share, um, if you stop sharing and then you shared like just the application, right. just share like the Google application and then it will it'll, like allow you to um, split screen. Okay, cool. I'm going to do that. For some reason I can't like combine the two tabs like I normally would. Or maybe I should just um also pop like this workshop screen out if you want to. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you very much. No worries. Wait, why can't I see it anymore? All right, that's how I got it. All right, cool. And then let me share my screen again. Entire screen, go live. All right, am I good? Oh, you guys can see me on the side. You're good. Know. Okay, never mind, it's fine. Yeah. All right. Um, does anyone know what these logos are? That's my first question. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure no, one of them is uh, one of them is Bitcoin, the other one's Ethereum. Yeah, so this one's Bitcoin, this one's Ethereum. Um, does it did any did everyone did anyone else know that? Is this common knowledge or what are we thinking? I think it's common knowledge, yeah. Common knowledge, that's fantastic. So a lot of times people get confused with things like Bitcoin and blockchain. They're not synonyms with each other. Bitcoin is a tool that uses blockchain. Um, so hopefully that distinction is clear, but, uh, hopefully through the rest of the workshop, it becomes even more clear. Um, so tools like, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're digital currencies that are working on top of a blockchain system. Um, so what blockchain is, does anyone want to take a guess? I know you guys came here to probably learn about it, but, uh, doesn't mean we can't uh, do a little, bit, a little bit of brainstorming as a group. Don't be afraid to take a stab at it. Anyone got an idea as to what blockchain is? Yes, no, maybe so. Uh, can I go for it? No? All right. So basically there was what- someone who said- Sorry. Someone who said that they, they got it? Anyone want yeah, to take a stab at it? Yeah, it's basically just um, a digital a digital currency. Uh, which aims to kind of be like a universal con currency, which is linked to the type of cryptocurrency instead of linked to like the, uh, different different countries. Not exactly. Not exactly. That you're, you're talking oh. about digital currencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Blockchain is not a currency. It's a tool. Oh, sorry. Um, I thought you. I thought no you problem. No problem. We're, we're, uh, we're all uh, crypto. We're all, um, yeah, you, you can take a stab at it. Is this the place? Yeah, yeah, that, that we're getting there. We're getting there. Anyone else want to try? Nope. Anyone else want to try? I'm not sure oh. if this is true, but doesn't it like support or like it has something to do with Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. So basically Bitcoin works because blockchain is the underlying technology as to how Bitcoin works. Like without blockchain, Bitcoin won't be a thing. Right? Do you understand that part? Hopefully that's clear. But it's fine. It's fine. So we got we got a couple of good ideas. I think we were on the right track. So basically, you can think of blockchain as a digital ledger. And what a ledger is is basically as I forget. I think uh, Nicholas mentioned it. It's like a place where you record information. Um, so that's 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 in essence what blockchain is. And then there's more there's more complicating elements to that. So blockchain is a completely decentralized and distributed um, immutable ledger of information. 
There's a lot of big words there. Um, so let's break it down a little bit further. Um, so if we were to think about uh, like a centralized system, so I have an image here. So basically what this, oh, uh, basically what this image is, is uh, it, it explains how you would send money to someone across the globe. Uh, and they, we call these remittances. So basically if you needed to send someone money to someone in uh, your family member overseas, um, you would use a remittance service uh, to get that money to them. Um, and this is just a very, very, it's an illustration of how complicated the entire process is. There's lots of intermediaries like the local bank, the correspondent bank, the remittance provider. There's lots of middlemen. What basically intermediaries is the middleman. So that's, that's what a centralized system is. So let's say, for example, if the local bank was to shut down, how will we get a remittance to the people we needed to? We won't be able to because we need that intermediary in order to get it to our receiver, right? You guys, did you guys understand that? Hopefully I made that clear. That's what a centralized system is. So in order for the entire system to work, we need that one authority to be there to, to mediate the entire thing. So think about it. like if you wanted to go save your money, you would go to a bank and you would give them the funds that they would put in your bank account um, or they would store it for you in some way, right? Imagine if the bank wasn't there or the bank was fraudulent or malicious, all of a sudden all your money will be lost or you wouldn't be able to store your money how you typically would, right? That's what a centralized system is. All the, all the people in that community, in that network, in that rely on that one entity in order to work. You understand that? Does it make clear? Is that clear? Yeah. Cool. So in a decentralized network, it means that there is no one governing body that has control over the entire network. It means that everybody on the, in the network has complete access and control over that blockchain. And uh, decentralized and distributed, they're, they're kind of synonyms for each other. Um, but because of this, it allows you to uh, do a couple of cool things. Uh, so instead of having to, let's say you wanted to send money to someone overseas, instead of having to go through this complicated network of intermediaries and middlemen, you could send it directly to them without the use of an intermediary through uh, a decentralized system like blockchain. Um, uh, and that's, that's, that's a really cool part. Um, and then another word I used was immutable. Does anyone know what immutable means? All right, no problem. Immutable basically means is that that information can't be changed. So the information you put on that ledger, you guys remember the ledger. The information you put on the ledger cannot be changed once it's being put in the ledger. So what this allows you to do is ensure security of that information. It can't be tampered with. Um, it can't be changed after it's being put in the blockchain, so on and so forth. Uh, and that's what makes it so secure. Uh, and Nicholas, Nicholas sort of talked about how, um, how like it's unhackable. Um, that's one aspect of it, but the other aspect of it is the immutability of it. So the information that's on the blockchain is almost guaranteed to be valid and uh, authentic uh, without, without a second glance. Whereas centralized systems like the bank, a lot of that is fraudulent, right? There's a lot of things that we don't see that is actually impacting our lives. But with the systems like blockchain, that really isn't an issue because of the immutability. Um, so that, that's what blockchain is in a nutshell. We'll get into how it works, so on and so forth later. But I hope, hopefully that makes a very holistic view of how the technology works. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this time? No? We're good? Feel free to turn on your cameras. I want to see your faces so you can see mine, you know? If we were doing this in person, you would have seen mine and I would have seen yours. So I might as well turn them on. Uh, so yeah, that's blockchain in a nutshell. So now I want to take a little closer look to the advantages and disadvantages of this technology before I explain how it works. Um, so the advantages to a blockchain system, I, I covered this, it's a decentralized system. So there's no one authority having control over the entire system. It's immutable, meaning that the information stored on that ledger is untamperable, so on and so forth. And it's a trustless system. So what that means is that we, let, let's go back to the idea of using your bank to store your money. You have to trust the bank to make sure that your money is secure. You have to trust the bank that they're actually saving their money, saving your money instead of spending it, right? 
in blockchain, you don't have to trust anybody because there is no central authority, right? That's one of the coolest things about this technology mm. is that you can live life without having to trust anybody whatsoever, any authority, any figure at all. But with all good things, there is a couple of drawbacks. The first is that because it's distributed, it basically means that this ledger is available to everybody in the system. So everybody that's using this blockchain has a copy of the blockchain with them. And because of that, it becomes highly energy dependent. That's one part of it. The other part of it is the validation part of the blockchain, which I'll get into later. But just, just, just think of the fact that you need to use a lot of energy for blockchain to work. And that's one of the biggest drawbacks of blockchain because um, it relates to my second point, because as more and more people start using the technology, more and more people, more energy is going to be used um, in the process of maintaining the blockchain and adding to it. Um, and that's, that's a, very, a very big negative in the, uh, the climate crisis we all live in. Um, the next is scalability. So in order for blockchain to work, you have to verify all the information that's put on the ledger. And I'm going to get into that later. But basically, all the nodes, I mean, hopefully, does anyone know what nodes means? Nodes means people. So all the people, or it's the computers or anything, all the people in that system need to verify that that piece of information is valid before it's actually added to the ledger. So when it, as more and more people join the blockchain and take part in it, it means that more and more people need to be consulted in making sure that that information added to the blockchain is actually valid. And over time, it becomes even more energy strenuous and it's very hard to scale as the amount of time it would take to validate information put on the blockchain would be uh, longer and longer, it would get longer. Um, so that's, that's another disadvantage. 51% attacks, I'll talk about it later as well. Um, so now to get into how blockchain works, um, we're gonna take it very literally. So what blockchain is, is blocks put in a chain, all right? Uh, you may be thinking like, okay, wow, how obvious. But there's, it's literally it. Like if we can, we can use this, this analogy for the entire explanation, and I am. So let's say we have our first block, and we call this block the genesis block. Um, and what this genesis block is, is the first block in the entire blockchain. It's the technical term for it, genesis block. And let's say in this block, I want to store the information bare, the word bare. I want to put the word bare into this block and I want to store it there because I don't want anybody to tamper with the word bare, okay? I'm going to take the word bare and I'm put in a magic box that spits out this random set of special characters. And in this case, it's B55H. And I'm going to put that in the box as well, the block, okay? That's one block. That's the first block. Here's where it, get, where it gets interesting. So let's say... Uh, who's here? Upkar is here, wants to add some information to the blockchain. Uh, let's say he wants to add the word lion to the blockchain. Instead of bear, he wants to add the word lion. So Utkarsh is going to come along and he's going to say, I want to store the word lion into this block. And this block is block number two. That, that word lion is then going to be taken and put through this magic box. And again, a special set of special characters is going to be spit out. And we're going to put that into the box. And in this case, it's AZ2H. That's Utkarsh's special numbers, right? But we're also going to store the special set of characters from the first block that I added. So in this case, B55H. And in doing so, we create a chain between the two blocks because now the block in front of my block has the same information that the first the block before it had. Does that make sense? If you don't understand it, let me let, tell me and I'll explain it even more. Do we all understand how they're changed, chained? Because this block has the same information that this block has, right? We're good? All right. So this is just basically repeated over and over again until you get the blockchain as it is today, right? Um, so we talked about that magic box, right? The magic box that spits out this number right here. In reality, this is called a hash function. And what this hash function is, is it basically takes that information and the hash function encrypts it using SHA-256 encryption, which basically spits out this long number that represents that, uh, that initial piece of information you put in. 
So we see in this image, like, let's say I want to. Sorry? Uh, so you said that uh, the block before it has the information from the first block, right? So does that work for like each of the blocks? So like if the third block, would it have the code from the lion and bear, or would it just be lion? Right. So, so in the third block, let's say we were supposed to add the, the block number three. We, let's say we want to put the word deer into it. We put deer into it, it generates the special set of characters, and then it would store this letter, this number, this set of characters, B558. Uh, no, not B558, one like that. The AZ2H. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then as this continues, it creates a chain, right? Because the one in front of it has the information from the one before it, and so on and so forth, until you get to the Genesis block. That's how it changed. That's how, that's how the chain is created. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we talked about the special set of characters. What those actually are, are they're, they're called hashes. Okay. And how you make that hash is you put it through a hash function. And basically what this function does is it encrypts that information using SHA-256 encryption. So let's say in this image, we're taking the word fox, which in our case, we were taking a lion or bear. And we put it through the hash function, and is this is the special hash that you would get. Make sense? So any information we want to put in the box is taken, put through the hash function, encrypted, and we store that hash sum as that piece of information. Make sense? Right? So like these numbers, the, the, the numbers in pink, pretend they're these numbers. These numbers. Right? Okay, cool. So basically now we see that Fox is a synonym to this, this large and complicated and scary uh, set of characters, all right? So that's the encryption part of it. Hash functions are very, very hard to decrypt. And that's where the security and the immutability of blockchain takes, part, takes place, you know? Um, you can't, uh, you can't, um, yeah, you can't, you can't just decrypt the information that's there. That's why it's secure. So the information you store on the blockchain um, is encrypted to the part that no one from the outside can see what that information is. And that's what makes it so secure. Um, so in order for these blocks to be actually added to the blockchain, something has to be done first. They have to be validated by all the nodes, the people in the system. We talked about this earlier. And this process is called proof of work. Um, and often people call it mining. Have you guys heard of Bitcoin mining, something like that. That's where this comes in. So in order for that block of information, it needs to be very, in order for that block of information to be put on the blockchain, it needs to be verified by all the people using proof of work. It needs to be mined, okay? And basically what you're doing is solving a very, very hard mathematical puzzle, okay? So if I was to ask you, what's five plus five? What's five, plus five? What's five plus five? Look, Karsh, what's five plus five? Very hard. I'm thinking it's 10, maybe. Uh, it's I could 10. be wrong. You got, it. you got it. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. Right. It's five. It's 10. What am I saying? It's 10, right? That's great. That's really good. It was, it was like a pretty easy puzzle. But now, what if I was to tell you 10 equals something? What is 10 equal? It'd be a lot harder, right? You don't know what those two numbers are. So think about this as the, the computationally hard mathematical puzzle that all the people in the system need to solve in order for that block of information to be solved. And you know, 10 could equal seven plus three or five plus five or two plus seven plus one. There's so many different combinations out there in order to solve that puzzle, right? That's what mining is. So basically all the nodes in the network are competing to solve this equation, right? So let's say, and if you if you had the combination seven plus three, that was wrong, but then Utkarsh came around and said five plus five, that's also wrong. But then Cushy here, Cushy here said two plus seven plus one, and that's the right combination. And because he was able to find the right combination and it all worked out, that block is now considered authentic, valid, and so on and so forth, and it's added to the blockchain, right? And for Cushy's trouble, uh, in Bitcoin's case, in case you're curious, she would be, be given a, a small payout of Bitcoin. That's why that's where the term mining comes into play. They're mining for Bitcoin. 
So they're solving this very hard mathematical puzzle in order to get that reward. And that's why mining is so worthwhile to Cushy. Okay. Does that make sense? So if I was to take this into the context of, oh shoot, we're cutting it close. If I was to take this into the context of Bitcoin, let's say instead of bear, it would actually be, Anne wants to send four Bitcoin to Cushy. That would be the information stored. And then that would be encrypted using the SHA 256 algorithm using the hash function. And it will be stored, that hash will be stored in the block in front of it. And as you do this, the, blo the blockchain continues to grow and grow. Um, and that's what makes the chain between the two. So let's say Anne wanted to, uh, Anne, was, Anne was a malicious person and she wanted to ruin the entire blockchain. And she said initially that, you know, four coins were sent to Cushy, but now she wants to change it such that it says three coins were, uh, were given to Cushy. In order for her to do that, she would have to find a way to change the information in the block. Let's say Anne is able to do that. But as we learned here, the information that is put into the block has a hash function. It has a hash function that spits out a, a scary looking set of, set of characters that represents that, that, uh, that transaction. So if Anne was to change that, that entire hash function would be messed up. It would be completely different. But because that hash function was stored in the block in front of it, if this block was changed, now they're not matching each other. You see? So if this block, if this block's hash function was, you know, C55H instead of B55H, but this block in front of it had the hash function stored in it B55H, that's an indication that the, the chain is, bloke, is broken because no, now the information is no longer valid. You guys understand this? Cool. Cool. So I was going to talk about some applications of blockchain, but uh, we're not going to have too much time to do that. But uh, just to give you a little glimpse as to what happens, I, we all know what we all established that we know what Bitcoin and Ethereum is that has been revolutionized in the finance space. Uh, people have been able to store their money, invest their money in a completely new medium, which is really cool. We also have implications with healthcare. So being able to access your healthcare records all across the world using blockchain. That's really cool. Right now, if you need, if you got sick and when you were traveling abroad, uh, the doctors there wouldn't have the medical information they need to treat you. But with blockchain, they'd be able to access that information um, in a secure manner all over the world, such that you're able to get the care you need. That's really cool. We're also seeing things in like supply chain. So being able to say, see where contaminations are. Uh, so let's say the apples you get are bad. We're able to pinpoint exactly where um, those apples got bad in the entire supply chain using blockchain. That's really cool. We're also seeing things like in art. So I don't know, have you guys heard of NFTs? Those are non-fungible tokens. Uh, that's another application of blockchain, being able to store unique art um, and have the rights to that art. We're also seeing things like artists uploading their music to blockchain platforms such that they get paid every time someone watches the, uh, or listens to their music. That's really cool. So there's tons of applications out there for blockchain. I wanted to, I wanted to get your thoughts on what you thought uh, blockchain could be implemented in, but uh, it turns out we don't have that much time left, uh, but that's okay. We can do it another time. Um, but uh, feel free to connect with me. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. You could probably search my name and there's also, I've also, I also have a website um, that you can check out. Um, but I hope you guys learned something from this workshop. It may have been complicated at times. I hope I was able to decomplicate it for you guys. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them at this time and feel free to connect with me. Yeah.